Uh, one of the things that we've been doing at Grace Church is talking about Jesus' life through the Gospel of Matthew and what does life with Jesus look like now. We're reading about what life with Jesus looked like in uh, the disciples' day and age uh, when they were walking around with Jesus, but how about us? How about 21st century Christians? What does life with Jesus look like? So we've been going through Matthew throughout this new year um, in January. We've gotten all the way to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, we covered chapter 11 and 12 last week. As we get closer to Easter, we're going to actually end this sermon series on Easter morning with Matthew's account of Jesus' resurrection. And so Palm Sunday, which is the week prior to Easter, we're going to actually read about Jesus' triumphal entry as Matthew records that. So there's a bunch of chapters we miss because we spend uh, April 2nd on one chapter, and by April 9th, we're all the way at the end of Matthew. So throughout Holy Week, the week in between Easter and uh, Palm Sunday, we're going to have a series of devotions regarding the chapters we skip over. Uh, David and I are going to do just a short video and devotional about those chapters, and then we'll post those each day at our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can see those, watch those. If you're following along with us going through Matthew, that way you can actually read the entire thing, and uh, we won't skip those chapters. We just won't do them here on a Sunday morning. So that'll happen during Holy Week because we're going to end this sermon series on Easter Sunday with Matthew's account of Jesus' resurrection. So this morning, uh, we're getting closer to that time. We're not there yet. Jesus is kind of making his way to Jerusalem. And what we heard about last week, if you weren't here, was the varied responses to Jesus, who he is, who he claims to be, and his message. And those very responses aren't any different than today. Those same responses we saw last week are the same responses Jesus still gets. You're going to respond a particular way as a result of today. If you heard anything about Jesus, you, you've responded in some way, and everybody's response is different. And so Jesus is prepping the disciples for that reality. Because when he's gone, they're going to keep doing this. They're going to keep telling people about Jesus. Uh, they did it in their area. They're still doing it today. We're doing it here in Schuylkill Haven. I'm going to go and do it with people in Liberia all over the planet. People are still doing it, and there's still these varied responses. And so Jesus is preparing the disciples for what that's going to look like and for them to be ready for what that's going to look like. And he does that in a particular way. They call it a parable. Now, we don't really use that word anymore. It's more like, for us, a riddle. Or if you remember fables, um, do all of you know the story of the tortoise and the hare? Show of hands. Do you know the story of the tortoise and the hare? Okay. So the story is not really about the tortoise and the hare. The point of the story is not so we get to know that, that tortoise, the turtle, and what his name is, and the, and the hare, and what he likes and doesn't like, and their friendship and their lives. That's not really what the story is about. If you didn't know that, you missed the entire story of what that story is about. There's something deeper going on in that story. We call them at one time fables. Or if you've ever heard a riddle, it's something you're being shared, but there's some kind of, kind of cryptic message within that riddle. Well, Jesus is going to do that in chapter 13. I'm not reading the whole chapter for you. If you come to Grace Church, you know that that was your homework for this week. Only 52 verses. Oh, I'm going to expect that you've done that. We're going to only read a couple of verses or a few verses, mainly talking about this parable Jesus tells about a farmer who's sowing some seed. But the whole chapter is all parables. It's all about the kingdom, and it's all these different kind of cryptic ways Jesus is challenging people to think deeper about his message and about who he claims to be. And he's using these stories, one, this parable that I'm going to share with you, because this is basically what you're going to come up against as a believer, if you're sharing the message, with the people you share it with. Now, Matthew begins chapter 13, again, kind of changing settings from where we were last week. 
It says that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Something different's about to happen. He's going to go from, we're kind of following Jesus around in Matthew 11 and 12. We were doing that. Jesus was here. We followed him here. We followed him here. He did some miracles along the way. He did some teachings along the way. But we're always walking around with him. Matthew 13, he's going to sit down again. And he's going to do some teaching. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat, and he sat in it. And while all the people stood on shore, he began to teach them. The rest of Matthew 13 is him teaching, sitting and sharing with the crowd, sometimes taking his disciples aside and talking to them specifically, but he's teaching them. He's teaching them about the kingdom. He's teaching them about who he is, but he's doing it through a parable. And what he's doing, Matthew 11 and 12, really just set us up for what we're going to read here this morning. It set us up for the different responses people are going to give to the message of the kingdom. And Jesus is going to talk about that with a farmer, something very familiar to everybody in that day and age. A farmer who is, the way that they planted was they cast seed. It was like broadcasting, you just throw it. Some lands here, some lands here, some lands here. It landed all kinds of different places. And Jesus is going to use this picture to teach them something about the kingdom and get them ready for when they go out. Jesus isn't going to be around forever. Now you got to go out and do this. And this happens all the time. Every time we open God's word, we'll talk about what that means for us as Christians as well. So we see that Matthew is going to prepare the disciples through the story about Jesus and what he says to them for the responses that you're going to get. The way he does that is through this parable. Then he told them, Jesus, told them many things in parables, saying, here it comes, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and they ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, The plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. And he ends this parable with this statement, uh, which leads into Jesus' reasoning behind using parables. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Jesus is saying, and he's going to start getting a little bit more cryptic as he gets closer to Jerusalem, and he's going to start taking his disciples aside and give them a little bit more in-depth teaching. But what follows, if you're looking in your Bible in verse uh, 10 um, to verse 17, is Jesus' explanation of why he starts using parables in the way that he does. We're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on this specific parable. And as I said, if you read all of it or if you just page through it, you're going to see there's another parable, the parable of the weeds, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the weeds explained, the parable of the hidden treasure, the parable this, the parable that. Jesus' whole teaching right now is about parables. And so we're going to see what he, what he means by this parable of the sower because he actually takes this parable and explains it further to his disciples. And it's good that he did that for us because now we know what he was talking about. And in it, he's going to show them that what he's interested in and what this parable is all about is the fruitfulness of the seed that he is sowing. What the farmer cares about is that that seed is producing a crop. Now, that's the word that is sometimes used in our English translations. The Greek word is more, uh, specifies fruit. But when we think of casting seed, we think wheat and we think a crop. But that same Greek word is being used in Matthew 5 through 7, where Jesus was talking about bearing fruit, or you'll know them by their fruit. Our life, he was making a big deal about what's happening within our lives as a result of Embracing him as Jesus the Messiah and agreeing and following him on this mission. And so what the farmer is concerned about is that fruitfulness. Uh, It's important for us as followers of Jesus doing life with Jesus. Matthew's suggesting to us that he still cares about that fruitfulness. 
the fruit that is being born out in our lives. So he, he explains it to them. He tells them what all of this means. Verse 18 is where he picks up that explanation. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. This is Jesus telling the disciples. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The birds, remember the birds came up and they ate that seed. The seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word out, making it unfruitful. And if it doesn't bear any fruit, they get rid of it. They chop it up, bundle it up, and they just burn it. That's what they did with wheat that didn't bear any fruit. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 100, 60, or 30 times what is so? Now, when Jesus is using that word, understands it, he's not talking about intellectually, I get it. Like two plus two is four. I get that. I intellectually understand that. Jesus isn't talking about, do you believe that he rose from the dead? Okay, I'll check that box. I'll check this box. I'll check this box. That's not what Jesus is talking about with grasping the message of the kingdom. What he's talking about is life transformation. You're going to start looking like a different person, this different human being. You're going to start resembling Jesus. That, that's what he's referring to here with those who grasp it or those who understand it. That's the, 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 what he's talking about in terms of hearing the message of the kingdom and understanding it. It's more than just intellectually saying, yes, I agree. He's talking about a message heard by everyone. Just think of a farmer, he's got the same seed and he's just throwing it. That same seed is landing in all different places. What's important, what the parable is about, is what happens next to the seed. When the farmer casts that seed, it's the same stuff being thrown, but what takes place next? And really the parable that says, the parable of the sower, if you were listening, is really more about the soil. Because the dude's just throwing it out and randomly throwing it here, there, wherever. What we are actually reading about is what the soil looks like that the seed is falling on. So when you hear the message of the kingdom, what actually matters is the soil that that message is falling on. So all of you walked in here this morning with soil. Your lives are like soil. And what Jesus is telling the disciples here is when you give this message of the kingdom and what Jesus is talking about is not just salvation. He's not just talking about unbelievers when you cast the, the gospel out there and they're like they were walking away from Jesus and now they're walking with Jesus. They give their lives to Christ. Yes, awesome. The message of the kingdom, we've been reading about since chapter 4. Reread chapter 5 through 7. That is the message of the kingdom. You know the stuff that says pray for your enemies bless those who persecute you, that you shouldn't hate people. Even if you hate someone, it's like murder, lust after people. Even if you lust after them, it's like adultery. Like all those things Jesus is saying, the beginning of chapter 5, the Beatitudes, all the stuff Jesus said about the Sabbath. And for us, the message of the kingdom is right here. What does God want us to know? Well, he wrote it down for us. Thanks, God. The message of the kingdom is God is the word that's landing on soil. All of you walked in here with soil. Now, what's that soil like? Because when you hear the message, the message you hear today, what matters is what happens next. What are you going to do with it? When we do something like baptism, what we're doing as parents is trying to cultivate this soil so that when my child comes into a place where they're going to be smack dab in front of God's word and they're going to hear the message of the kingdom, whether that's a pastor preaching it, whether that's going to youth group, whether that's being in part of a Sunday school class, going to vacation Bible school, hearing a message at our, our uh, ACON, wh whatever it looks like, what we're trying to do is cultivate soil so the seed lands on it and produces a fruit. Because what happens next, Jesus is saying, 
is what actually matters. And that's why he says, whoever has ears, let them hear. This is an important thing for us to understand because our response to the message of the kingdom is what Jesus is interested in. And so he gives those four examples of this same seed that's being cast. It's the same stuff. The message is being cast. Now it lands on different kinds of soil. And Jesus wasn't just talking about groups in his day. He set up categories that are true of everybody. The same things he said here are true of people today. It wasn't like, well, the Pharisees are this group. They're the, the, the path group. And the crowd is this group. They're kind of maybe the rocky soil. And the disciples is this group. No, he set up categories. It's the broadcast of the seed. And here's where it's going to land. These four different options. The soil's going to hit these areas. And what happens next? Sometimes that message of the kingdom lands on soil. And actually, if you remember what Jesus said, the evil one is like that bird that comes and snatches it. So we saw an example of that. Jesus is walking through fields. They're eating some of this grain. He's challenged by the Pharisees about the Sabbath. He walks into a synagogue. We talked about this last week, like a church like this. And there's a guy who's a shriveled hand. Can't use it. And Jesus says, is it proper, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? He asked the Pharisees this, and they make some statement about it, and Jesus heals the guy's hand. Been crippled, heals the guy's hand. The message of the kingdom, of what he's brought to, to the people, the, the miracles that he's doing, what was the response of the Pharisees if you were here last week? to the shriveled hand when Jesus heals it. They start plotting to kill Jesus. When you've witnessed that, that's what it looks like when seed falls on the path. You are actually helping the evil one. They actually became part of what Satan was trying to do. And eventually it led to the execution of an innocent man. People still hear that message today and they come at the very different conclusions about who this Jesus is. And sometimes it leads to further destruction. They completely miss the mission and the message of Jesus. That's still true today. It's still happening today. The message of the kingdom is falling on what kind of soil? What kind of soil did you walk in here with this morning? Was it the path? Was it rocky soil? Jesus tells us what that means. Is they show some enthusiasm about the kingdom. You know, the crowds were excited about Jesus doing all kinds of miracles, feeding thousands and thousands of people. But what happened later? He had some hard things to say, and they started walking away from him. This external stimulus is like, yeah, we're super excited. We've had that spiritual high. We had this great moment, and now some tough stuff happens in life. Jesus told his disciples what would take place. Matthew 10, we did that. We read that. You're going to get flogged. You're going to get arrested. You're going to be persecuted. In fact, the whole world might hate you because of me. If there's no inner conviction, this is more than intellectually getting it. This is an inner conviction. This is, I can't be moved from it. But sometimes the message of the kingdom falls on that rocky soil. And when life gets tough, when things start happening, we start walking away from Jesus. Well, Jesus, God, why would you let this happen? Why would you do this? Why would you do that? Today, we call that, lots of people are calling it deconstruction. People are deconstructing their faith, and at the end of it, they've deconstructed the whole building, and there's nothing left. The message of the kingdom is about the Christian faith. This goes beyond just, Jesus died for my sins and rose again. This is, are you producing fruit? Are you living it out? 
What kind of soil are you walking around with when you hear the message of the kingdom? Because life is tough. There's lots of hard things we go through in life, and sometimes it even gets tougher simply because you love Jesus. Because Jesus says certain things, because God has said certain things about life, about reality, about the world, and us in it. And the message of the kingdom goes out. And you're hearing it this morning from God's Word. Maybe you listen to a podcast and you hear it. Maybe you read your Bible. Maybe you have a devotional. Maybe you have a favorite preacher who's way more interesting than Ted, and you listen to it there. It's all going out. What kind of soil is it all landing on? Is it thorny? That starts, that, that goes out, the message, it takes hold, but there's thorns all over the place, weeds all over the place. And yeah, it's growing, but so are the weeds. And if you do any gardening, you know you got to weed the garden constantly because if the weeds start growing, you're not going to produce anything. The weeds are taking all the nutrients and all that, and depending on what kind of weeds, it can cover the entire garden. Sometimes that seed, the message of the kingdom, life with Jesus, falls on that soil. And the world starts choking it out. God gets reprioritized to number 73 in the priority of things in my life. Other things begin to take importance, and before you know it, I'm not sure where God actually is. We get distracted by lots of stuff. Jesus even points out wealth. Go back and read Matthew 6 when Jesus talks about worry, about food, about what we're going to wear, about the shelter, about normal things of life. When Jesus talks about where are you storing up your treasure? On earth where thief can steal, moth can eat up, and rust can destroy. This is the message of the kingdom. Jesus has been talking all about it, Matthew 4, until now. And you and I have the, also the blessing of having what God has to say to us through his word. Sometimes that seed falls on soil, and before you know it, we've forgotten all about them. And it actually doesn't produce anything. And believe me, we live in a world where you can easily be distracted. These can distract us all the time. Oh, I got a text from my sister. Hold on. I seriously did, but I'm not, I respect your time. I'm not going to text my sister back. She wants money. <laughs> So much in our life pulls us away from Jesus, from the truth, from what God desires. I mean, it's amazing to me how true it is of what Jesus is saying. This wasn't just for the disciples. Life with Jesus now still looks the same. What Jesus is interested in is the seed falling on fertile soil. You hear the message of the kingdom and it becomes a lifestyle commitment. It's not just intellectually saying, yep, I get it. Okay, we'll see you later. Yep, I can check that box and check that box. Read chapter 10 where Jesus talks about enduring to the end, faithfulness and fidelity, allegiance to him. It becomes a commitment of your life. So committed that the most important for, thing for me is to make sure my children know this truth. That's why we're doing baptism. This covenant is so good. It's such a blessing of what God has done in Christ, this message of the kingdom that Jesus brought. I'm going to train my children in. I am going to cultivate that soil as much as I can so when that seed hits it, fruit is produced. A giant crop is produced. A lifestyle commitment takes place. That when I walk out of these doors, I'm actually going to look for ways to love my enemy. That my response to that coworker, that family member, that neighbor that stabbed me in the back is not one of revenge. It's not to hold a grudge. In fact, I'm willing to forgive that person. I'm willing to show grace to that person. And even though they don't deserve it at all, be kind to them. Now, maybe that sounds dumb. That's the message of the kingdom. I'm going to go help that person that can give me nothing. When we do church left the building, we don't ask for anything, and many of them can't give us a thing. 
when we go to D.C. for a mission trip and there's people who are homeless, we can't get anything from it. That's the message of the kingdom. All the things you've been hearing in your life, in churches, on radio, through YouTube, whatever, what is that falling onto? Is it producing something? Because that's what Jesus is interested in. Not the amount. They're varied. Some 30, some 60, some 100. The focus is that it is producing fruit. That's what Jesus is caring about because the reality is that the other stuff isn't going to produce anything. So when this message of the kingdom goes out, you've walked in here today with soil. You walked in, and I'm not sure what your soil looks like. There's people listening at home. I don't know what their soil looks like. I'm not sure how much it's been cultivated. If the message of Jesus is taking hold in your life, the expectation is you're bearing fruit. Now, read Galatians chapter 5, something called the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. That should be naturally bearing. We should, that should be coming out of us as followers of Jesus. But more than that, we're supposed to see other people bearing that fruit. Be, as a result of my life, somebody else comes to the kingdom. And the amount is not what's important. Bruce Hummel, Judy's father, many of you know Bruce, uh, was a big, their family was a big part of Grace Church. Uh, Judy's mom, Bruce's wife, has gone on to be with the Lord a while ago, but I had an opportunity to visit somebody a couple months back. I can't remember exactly when. And we were talking about people at Grace. Uh, Bruce, I think, was in the hospital at that point, and I just shared that with this lady who knew him, and she told me the story of how she came to faith because of Bruce Hummel. She's in the kingdom because of Bruce. What Jesus is concerned about is that bearing fruit. Bruce's life was bearing fruit. No, Bruce wasn't Billy Graham. Bruce just had to be Bruce. He didn't care about 160 or 30. Is your life bearing fruit? Jesus is still interested in that. Jesus still cares about that. And really, the story of this parable is about our soil. If the message of Jesus is taking hold in your life, you will be producing fruit. That's what Jesus is concerned with. So when you walk out of here, the message of the kingdom is going to land on different soils. My prayer is that it's fertile. And then as a result of it, you embrace Jesus. As a result of it, you start bearing fruit. As a result of being a part of Jesus' kingdom, somebody else comes into the kingdom because of you. Bruce was probably one of the quietest, quietest guys I ever met. If you know Bruce, um, he didn't say much. There's people in this kingdom because of his life. That's what Jesus is looking for. As you go today, maybe that's a prayer for you. God, where is my soil? How can I produce fruit in my life? How can I understand, embrace this lifestyle commitment to the person in the ministry and the work of Jesus Christ? Let's pray. God, this morning we are just thankful for the message of Jesus that we find in the Gospels. God, thankful that Jesus, who came to share the message of this kingdom, has landed on fertile soil. Thankful for the people like Bruce, God, people in this building right now who continue to love and serve you and as a result of their faithfulness to you, their allegiance to you, there are people in the kingdom of God. There's a whole world out there, Lord, that needs Jesus. And I pray, God, that as we've walked in here this morning, that you might challenge us on where the soil is in our life. But when it's fertile, Lord God, you can do amazing things. I pray that we would embrace 
this message of Jesus, the person of Christ, and that it might change our lives. And as a result of that, we might bear that fruit 30, 60, 100 times because of your work in our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.